Hello, oral minoxidil was recently called a game changer in dermatology and this is why. Oral minoxidil changed the way we treat androgenic alopecia. There are several products on the market for topical treatment, such as the approved drugs of 2% minoxidil and 5% minoxidil. There are some compound drugs which may be prepared by the pharmacist, including topical minoxidil in concentrations which are higher than 5% and we can have a compound drug which is the low dose oral minoxidil. And a possibility under development is the sublingual tablets with minoxidil. And finally, there are the approved drugs for hypertension. In some countries, they are available from the dose of 2.5 or from the dose of 5 mg up to the dose of 10 mg. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that the tablets which are available for hypertension, they are prepared to treatment with much higher doses compared to the dose that we use in dermatology. So in hypertension, the dose is up to 40 mg per day, whereas in our hands, in the hands of the dermatologist, the effective and safe dose is from 0.25 up to 5 mg per day. And there is no commercially available tablet of that small size. And this is why we use the compound treatment. The typical dose in most women will start from approximately 0.51 mg and then we slowly increase the dose up to approximately 2.5 mg. The typical dose in men starts from approximately 1 or 1.5 mg and then we increase the dose slowly up to approximately 5 mg. We always increase the dose very slowly while monitoring for possible adverse events. There are some patients in whom I would always start with a lower dose. Uh, this would be the case in some elderly patients, especially if they have cardiac comorbidities. In patients taking medications, I would look for interactions. In patients who are hypotensive, I would be very cautious, but also in patients who are underweight, in patients who have a very low BMI. The average efficacy of minoxidil in androgenic alopecia is quite good. However, it differs from patient to patient. In many patients, we would probably consider treating the patient with a combination therapy rather than with oral minoxidil in monotherapy. What are the adverse effects? of low-dose oral minoxidil in patients with androgenic alopecia. The most common adverse events are hypertrichosis, which is present in approximately 15 to 20 percent of the patients. Some patients will develop vertigo or dizziness. This is the case in less than 2 percent of patients, and some patients may develop leg edema. Rare but possible adverse events include tachycardia, headache, some patients may develop periorbital edema and some may develop insomnia. Edema of the eyelids is quite rare. It is usually most pronounced in the morning. An extremely rare adverse effect is the pericardiac effusion. The main symptoms of this disease are the presence of a chest pain, of dyspnea, very non-specific features may be present such as leg edema and vertigo, which of course may be also present regardless of this adverse effect. In every case, pericardiac effusion needs to be diagnosed and confirmed by the cardiologist. Interestingly, the average dose causing the adverse events is lower in the women compared to men. Every adverse effect related to oral minoxidil will resolve after either decreasing the dose or discontinuation of the treatment. The formal contraindication for oral minoxidil is feochromocytoma. On the basis of medical literature, it has been suggested to include as contraindication pregnancy and breastfeeding, arrhythmia, low blood pressure, and renal diseases. Low-dose oral minoxidil has been shown to be effective also in children with androgenic alopecia and the usual dose according to medical literature was between 0.025 mg up to 0.5 mg depending on the age of the child 
The adverse effects are similar to those that we see in adults, and I would like to draw your attention to one article that described 20 children who were accidentally exposed to high dose oral minoxidil. These children did not receive treatment for androgenic alopecia, but for another health problem. And the most typical and most common adverse effect in these patients was the hypodrichosis. It was present in 65% of the children. Other adverse effects, as listed in this slide, have been seen very rarely. Can we treat patients who have a confirmed allergy to topical minoxidil with the oral form of the drug? It's probably too early to say, but there is a description, a recent description of patients with allergy to topical minoxidil who had known signs of allergy when taking minoxidil in the oral form. What is better, oral or topical minoxidil? In my opinion, it's too early to answer this question. However, there is a study which was published just recently. It shows that 5% topical minoxidil has similar efficacy to one milligram oral minoxidil in patients with androgenic alopecia. However, we have to take into consideration that especially with the topical form, there are many variables, including the way of application, how consistent the patient is with applying the treatment in a regular way and many other variables. So I think here we are still waiting for more data. Can we use oral minoxidil in other types of hair loss, not only in androgenic alopecia? Well, yes, we can. In some diseases, uh, oral minoxidil may be used in monotherapy, such as monolytrix or in trichorexis nodosa. In other diseases, we would use it only in combination with other treatments, this would be the case, for example, in alopecia reata and lichen plana pilaris or in frontal fibrosing alopecia. To understand why oral minoxidil may be effective in these diseases, we have to take into consideration that the hair follicle is surrounded by a dense network of blood vessels, and improving the blood flow may influence the growth of the hair. However, minoxidil is causing not only the dilatation of the blood vessels, but also it has several other mechanisms of action which may be of some importance in androgenic alopecia, but also in other diseases that cause hair loss. So in summary, oral minoxidil has a very complex mechanism of action. It makes it effective in androgenic alopecia, but possibly also in other diseases that are associated with hair loss. The dose is always established individually in every patient and it is increased slowly while we monitor the patient for possible adverse effects. Thank you very much. If this video is useful, please consider giving me a like. Thank you.